This week on Svengoolie... I identified the poison as that of a scorpion. Ooh, I hope it's not a big one. It's a gigantic scorpion! Well, that settles that. It's the black scorpion on the next Svengoolie. That's fantastic, Doc. Saturday night on MeTV. Calling all stations. Clear the air lanes. Clear all air lanes for the big broadcast. Okay, we're back on the air. And we're back to arachnids, but this time it isn't giant spiders. We're heading to Mexico where natural disasters have caused major destruction. But a pair of geologists discover some unnatural destruction, which locals blame on a demon bull. I don't need this bull hockey. But before long, another volcanic eruption reveals the real cause. Deadly giant prehistoric scorpions that no weapon seems capable of stopping. Good grief. The search for answers leads to an underground lair with more prehistoric menaces and more destructive mayhem as the giant arachnids make their way to Mexico City, left defenseless in the path of the Black Scorpion. Ah! This is, again, a slightly longer movie, so we'll limit my on-screen time to bring you more of the movie. And believe it or not, many believe this movie led to a now-popular TV show. Oh, no, you don't. Not this Time. Too late now. See, originally some studio heads felt that the faces of the scorpions were too frightening and that perhaps they should be masked to protect easily frightened moviegoers. No way. That's way too creepy. Well, they decided against that, of course, but when test footage of the scorpions with covered faces was recently discovered, it gave executives at Fox the idea for the current hit show, The Masked Stinger. Wrong! You see, because they sting and it's kind of, you know... Okay, just throw them all into my much time. Oh, we need to get longer movies or less chicken. Throw them. centuries, the prayers of Mexico's peasants have been their only shield against the devastating furies that have wrecked their homes and destroyed their lives. And so today, again they kneel, terrified and helpless, as a new volcano is created by the mysterious and rebellious forces of nature. The earth has split a thousand times. Whole acres of rich farmlands have cracked and dropped from sight. And millions of tons of molten lava are roaring down the slopes in a quake recorded on the seismograph of the University of Mexico as the most violent of modern times. To the benighted citizenry of this remote countryside, the most alarming aspect of the phenomenon is the fact that its unabated hourly growth is without precedence, having reached a towering height of 9,000 feet within a few days. And with each added foot, it spreads its evil onslaught into a wider circumference. But what is now most feared is that rescue work will be severely hampered by the hazardous inaccessibility of the terrain. I guess so, with four brothers and two sisters. What do you suppose caused this wreck? That police car out there? Could have been a bull. Well, if it was, it had to be the grandpappy of the biggest bull that ever was. You mean Michael Jordan? No, you fathead. Oh, uh, sorry, I know you've already recognized a familiar face you've seen in our show before. Hank Scott is Richard Denning, who was the evil boss and creature from the Black Lagoon, and we've discussed his career in our show before. And coming up, another familiar face and figure will meet Teresa Alvarez, played by lovely Mara Corday, the former Playboy Playmate and star of Tarantula and the Giant Claw. <whistles> 
keep your claws to yourself. But the real star of this movie is the stop motion animation, supervised by the man called the father of stop motion, Willis O'Brien, who brought us King Kong and Mighty Joe Young. He often left a lot of the animation work to associates like Ray Harryhausen or, as he did in this film, Pete Peterson. And it's no secret that this film was on such a tight budget and when they were running out of money, O'Brien and Peterson actually finished the animation work in Peterson's garage. Are you kidding? No, but it wasn't a total loss. That meant they could also tighten the scorpion's brakes and change his oil. I bet that had this thing. But had to was a scorpion. Remember, we're minimizing my segments in this show so we can bring you more of 1957's Black Scorpion, and I think the crew here misunderstood that we're still doing some stuff because I can't find them anywhere, unless they're just trying to avoid me. You did notice the fried beans were still hot on the stove. Yep. So? Look, when I've already got a half a dozen questions I can't answer, I try to ignore any new ones. You think we ought to use the radio to tell them about the kid? Nope. I think we ought to get to San Lorenzo as quick as possible. I don't know about that, but I found something a lot more interesting. Yeah, a career as a peeping Tom. We're gonna call the cops if y'all don't leave us alone. Tell it to the gazing geologist there. Back to the Black Scorpion, and have you ever heard it's a bad idea to drink a lot of tequila before going horseback riding? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, you'll see it. What? You disagree? It'll do you a lot more good than that bottled water. Oh, yes. Now I see them. The salt solution, I, I can understand that. But what's the tequila for? Well, uh, in your country, I believe you call it uh, the coffee break. <laughs> 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 no, we call it a good way to get fired. What, are you drunk? I didn't say it, but I will say, many of the actors in this film were mostly in Hispanic films and also worked in another Willis O'Brien film shot in Mexico, The Beast of Hollow Mountain. Hello! 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 Hello. Hello. It's hollow, and, and that includes little Juanito, Mario Navarro, who was in The Magnificent Seven, and also Carlos Rivas, and his pal Artur Ramos, was in True Grit, Alfred Hitchcock's Topaz, and The King and I, and did lots of TV from the 50s through the 80s. He was even in an episode of The Addams Family. And keep your hands to yourself. Yes, thing, do that. Uh, kindly Father Delgado is Pedro Galvan, who was in Two Meals for Sister Sarah with Clint Eastwood, and Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch, and the narrator you heard at the start of the movie? Terrified and helpless as a new volcano is created by the mysterious and rebellious forces of nature. That's Bob Johnson, whose voice you'll hear later in this movie on a radio, a public address system, and more. He was a busy voice artist who did voice work in The Outer Limits and Star Trek, and his was the voice on the tape and disc recordings that gave Peter Graves his instructions on Mission Impossible. Does that mean this recording I'm on will self-destruct in five seconds? It could be. Oh, no. Five, four, three, two... Well, it's about time we actually met up with the Black Scorpion, so let's get to it. And, oh, we can relax now. The rolling audition bus for America's Got Talent just passed by us. Well, it looks like you were pretty lucky. That thing really came close, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. We were blessed that it didn't go any further. Our, our plantation would have been ruined like the rest of the land. Oh, he just found out that that bargain dog food you've been feeding him is mostly cereal. That's right. Okay, now here's some really obscure trivia for you. The actor that the scorpion picked off the telephone pole, Quentin Bulnes, became the voice of Hanna-Barbera's Quick Draw McGraw when the cartoons were dubbed in Spanish to run in Mexico. Yahoo! <laughs> so, you might say his lines came straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> You might say that, and I should try not to. Ah, oh, shut up, will you? I will. Prepare yourself for more of the Black Scorpion, and whatever you do, don't mention that you suspect the ranch's cattle have hoof and mouth disease. Ooh, that's nasty. Don't say it. What's wrong with the cattle field? With truth, I cannot say. Help, Mr. Hicks! Well, that's my need. A 
great big opening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. Big opening. Very funny. This portion of our program is brought to you by Scorpion Sports Bar. We put the score in Scorpion with a high betting line. You can win or get stung. You can bet on any sports event. Horse racing. Boingy, 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 boingy. You'll win the marathon. <laughs> or basketball. Put a bundle on the bulls. There's big bucks to be made at Scorpion. I want to do a job. Sorry, no minors admitted. Visit Scorpion Sports Bar in beautiful San Lorenzo. You can bet and imbibe. Have a tequila. But what's the tequila for? Because we're all out of vodka stingers. Don't! We're back in black. The black scorpion, that is. And, and you might not believe this, but like so many other movies, somebody thought it would be a great idea to turn this one into a Broadway show. Can't argue with that. It's too stupid. And like any Broadway show, what were they hoping to have? A great big opening. I guess he found it, Dr. Velasco. Yeah. Look, there's something wrong with this. Hello. Hello. Yes. Mendoza's dead. We just saw a worm 30 feet long. Great. Now all you need is a 90-foot-long fish hook. If, if you say so. I say. <laughs> for those fishing for more trivia about this movie, that noise that the scorpions make... That's the same noise that the giant ants make in the movie Them. And that big worm, as well as an arachnid you'll see in the next movie segment, were surprisingly unused stop-motion figures Willis O'Brien made for King Kong. And for this week's song, we're bringing back one we did back in 1995 when we showed O'Brien's Beast from Hollow Mountain. Yeah, sung by the beast with a hollow head. <laughs> Geologists don't know What's bugging San Lorenzo? At first they find a babe, and later they find a babe. A cop's found with no life, who's looking like Barney Fife. Bad balance must abound, cause everyone's falling down. They don't know what they're going to battle. All they see is a lot of dead cattle, who believes there's a demon bull battle. Be the reason for some body work. In Obsidian, they found a thing hid and released a small ancient arachnid. And they're constantly pestered by this kid. I think little Juanito's a jerk. We know something came out of the desert that's upsetting the steers and the pup. With his claws like a crab, it's all ready to grab, and that truck will become a pickup. The scorpions truly, as sure as I'm Sven Gulli. So sell your stock quickly if it's ATT. Ah! Teresa Alvarez, not scared what the big shot says. She'll join in the defense. The scorpion takes offense. The men take off their hats. When she's walking by, I'm told, in hopes she'll take off more, like when she was a centerfold. <laughs> you could figure that sooner or later, someone had to fall into the crater and to lower the cage elevator. He's not Frazier, but still it's a crane. They are lowered down into the dark, like a ride in a cheap country theme park where somebody's forgotten to remark. From flash photography, please refrain. Pete and Arthur are met in the cavern by a worm who's taking a stand. And it's more of a killer than the caterpillar that Alice met in Wonderland. The goofball Juanito is hiding incognito. His actions are absurd. I wish they'd give him the bird. Now cut, I say cut that out, boy. We're back to face the black scorpion again, but first, it's time for the cartoon quiz. Oh, yummy! Here's the question, and you'd be amazed how many people get this wrong. What is Bugs Bunny's catchphrase? Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc. Over here. Over here. That's just like that crane arcade game where you try to pick up a prize with a claw, only with those, just when you think you've got it, you have the prize drop. Ow, ow, ow! 
What do you know? It happened here, too. Hey, Sven, did you know the actor playing the crane operator, Margarita Luna, played Luna when Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch? No, I didn't. You know about Peckinpah? Sure, that's what they called my dad when he was using his beak. Peckinpah. That guy's a chicken, I tell you. A giant chicken. Uh, can we get to some mail, please? You bet. You know, we do not do birthdays on our show. Repeat, we do not. So instead, Kayla Wallowitz made a special Sven-themed greeting card for her aunt, Nancy McCabe, from her family. They all live in separate places, but watch our show at the same time and text each other. And look at this. Evan Voda of Baltimore, Maryland, found this ad in a sad sack comic book from 1975 and asked if this is you as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> no, it says right there it's witchy poo. Oh, I thought he meant the kid selling grit. <laughs> While you look at this rubber chicken Sarah Morrison made for her dad, Dave from Alabama, let me remind you to check out Svengooley.com for the latest Sven merchandise, Sven's blog, Kerwin's Corner, and more. All at Svengooley.com and hit the theme for us, Cyber Chairs. Thank you for all the cards and letters. Do you think our pal Freddie Cannon has been watching the MeTV cartoons? Hmm. Could be. We return to the massive menace to Mexico known as the Black Scorpion and, oh, that Juanito. Yeah? Well, he, he knows that in certain areas, you always should check your shoes before you put them on in case a scorpion might have crawled into them. So Juanito thought he'd make sure that wouldn't happen. He filled their shoes with cement. Oh, Juanito, why did you do it? I tried to help them. Oh. It'll be dark in about an hour, and those scorpions will be coming out again. You couldn't use it. It's absolutely secret. This is a city of four million people. If word of this leaks out, the panic of the population could be worse than the scorpions. Oh, dude, you must not like heavy metal. I don't know this band Panic of the Population, but the scorpions rock. Oh, wow, man, yeah. <laughs> Play Rock You Like a Hurricane. Hell no! Guess they don't take... Now the king-sized conclusion of the Black Scorpion, and th there's so much tension. Do something to let off a little steam. Now, in case you were wondering, the reason the scorpion looks like a shadow in some spots is because the production ran out of money, and that was just the traveling mat that the actual stop-motion animated scorpion would have been superimposed on. You got what you paid for. Which wasn't much. And let me impose upon you to come back next week. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, hello, uh, we're tight on time here, so could you please state your business? Oh, Sven, I hear they found a scorpion in amber. Oh, really? They think she swallowed it, thinking it was made of licorice. Sorry, I didn't have time for a better joke. Mm, so long, Screwy. See you in St. Louis. Oh, I just wish every time we did a joke that was really bad, I could use the excuse that we didn't have enough time for it. It's not time for a full barrage. Either hit me with the chickens. All right, well, thank you so much for showing up here and joining us for the Black Scorpion who I believe was a WCW wrestler at one time, but I may be mistaken about that. I'm mistaken about a lot of things, so come back next week and see how many mistakes I can make. Until then, have some chicken.